Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be showing my print farm and how I run it. So this is my Prusa Mini. I run 100% PLA, almost never PTG or any other material. And in general, throughout the whole print farm, uh, it's just PTG, PTG on those three, and then some PLA between the two P1Ss. This one sticks to PTG, the Mark III, and then this one is just PLA. And this one makes small components for the larger assemblies of my products. I bought this one about two years ago, and then I sold the Ender 3 that I had before, which was right there. And so this one stuck through just because um, it's better at printing PLA and because it has the smooth PEI bed. And so that's why it's still running. This one's going to get sold because I bought this one to replace this one. This one barely arrived yesterday. And so this one's going to be put up on Marketplace and sold. I hope I get about the same price I paid because the other Mark III that I had, I had an Ender III, a Mark III, and then this one, this one, and then I got the P1P, that P1S, this P1S. And so this one is next to go. On the last Mark III, I sold that one for 550 and I bought it at 500 and so I actually profited on that one and had it for two years and never replaced a part ever. And then this one, I bought for 650 and I'm gonna sell it for, I'm gonna try to shoot for the same because I think it could still get that value. This is the P1S that arrived yesterday. It's running perfectly. I keep these three running 24 seven now just to keep up with production. I used to be printing about three to five of my products on those two, but now to keep up, I'm printing as many as I can. I'm filling up the build plate. So these are the colors. I mostly run black PTG, and then these are just for the extra details on my products. And this is the P1P. This is the first Bamboo Lab printer I purchased, and it's awesome. The only thing I wish it had was all the extra things the P1S has, like the enclosure and the fans. I think it would benefit from that. But other than that, it runs perfectly. I also had this one running full PTG, but I might throw in some PLA now, just because the two P1Ss are in charge of P PTG prints. And then over here, I have my smart switches. I have all my printers running on smart switches so that I can turn them off when the prints are done to save some energy. This is the air filter. Looks like I need to replace the filter on it because it's red. This is the Sumu filament dryer. I used to use this a lot, but now I don't because I'm running through my spools so fast so they don't really catch moisture especially being inside these cases with all these these desiccant packets. And this is the other P1S. This is the second Bamboo Lab printer I purchased. And looks like a print is done. This is a Husky container I purchased about two years ago to hold my filament. As you can see, I have packets of desiccant from basically every roll I've gotten in the past two years. I just fill this thing up. The floor is desiccant all over. Like I said, I usually just use black and then all these rarer colors just stay in here. Under the P1P and the P1S, I keep my other filament. And so these two rows have PTG. This row has PLA, including this part. And then these are just used spools that are ready to go to recycling. And then this too, just open boxes. I ordered about 40 PTG rolls at once during a overture sale. And so I was able to get each roll at 13.49 when I usually get them at like 16 or 17.99. So I just made a bulk order and saved some money. So I actually swapped the bed. It's basically the same textured golden PI plate, 
but I put the AliExpress one in here right away just because I wanted to try it out. I ordered it about a week ago and it arrived a couple days ago and so I've been trying it out and it works perfect. So I'll continue buying those because these are $40 if you want to get a replacement from Bamboo Lab and it's not worth it because I could get two, almost three for the price that you'd be paying for this one. And so these printers are dedicated to printing for my business full time and then the reason I got a third one was because I was backed up on orders and also wanted another machine to prototype on and so it worked out perfectly. I was able to get two of the products that were on hold for being released and now I'm just keeping up with orders. And I'm in the automotive industry. I used to be in the RC car hobby where I would make accessories. And these are the two light bars I have. They're from Home Depot. I believe they're 32 inches. They produce a ton of light. And then I also have them connected to a smart switch. So when I come in here, I just take out my phone, click the button and they're on. I even do it on the way there. So like from my room to the garage, I just switch it on and they're ready. This is where I have the P1S connected, Prusa Mini, and then the light bar. And then I don't have the Mark III connected because I'm planning to sell it soon. And I don't even use it, so it's just sitting there. And I have this sensor for temperature and humidity. I don't really pay attention to it too much because I just keep printing like normal, but it's good to know what the data is. Also, instead of 3D printing the tray that goes down the side for all the filament poop, I just use these filament boxes. I have one here with the P1P, here with the P1S, and then another one behind this P1S. And so I still have to get it set up on this one because obviously it doesn't work that well being at an angle. It's just gonna stack up here on the bottom and then come down here. So I have to move the P1S forward. But yeah, I just find it easier and everyone has these. So I use these to cut off the excess filament. So sometimes when you end a print, there's like a long line here or a squiggly. And so you just take it off before starting a new print. I use both of them for that. And then these to take off the purge lines and also the surrounding area around the print. And as you can tell, they wear out after time, but you could just print a new one in like 10 minutes. And then it's always handy to have a pen. So what I do is make notes of what I have to print. And so I just check it off. I make a check off sheet on the flashcard or the sticky note. And then I used to use this for the Ender 3 to level it, but now I just use it for the purge lines to remove it or any smaller things that need uh, metal to scrape off. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. I just wanted to give an introduction showing the printers that I have and how I have everything set up. Please let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions and also any video ideas. I plan to do another video where I show tips on how I'm more efficient and save energy in this print farm, as well as slicer tips. So that's what's coming in the future. Also, I'm gonna post the P1S setup video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.